Hello friends, we continue our discussion on the theory of set and today we are extending our analysis by exploring the set operation. Before that, we will elaborate the concept of Venn diagram which are extensively used in the analysis of the set theory. Welcome to the session. Before explaining various set operation, first let us clarify the meaning of Venn diagram. The set as well as set operations can be represented by drawing pictures or diagram which is popularly known as the Venn diagram. So Venn diagram is a pictorial representation of set. So, it is a pictorial representation of set, it is essentially explaining the concept of set using diagrams, using pictures and it was first conceived by John Venn in the year 1880, that is why it is known as the Venn diagram. So, when we draw the Venn diagram, we basically draw a universal set first. So, we have a universal set. We have already seen that the universal set is an all-inclusive set. So every set will be a subset of universal set. And universal set is drawn like a rectangle. Let us say this is a universal set U. So universal set is drawn like a rectangle in which each individual set, which will be a subset of universal set, will be drawn like a circle-like figures. Let us say this is the set A. So we have a universal set which is drawn like a rectangle and we have a subset of universal set and let us call it as set A, it is drawn like a circle. So this is the Venn diagram which is a pictorial representation of set and we will use this concept or we will use or we in fact utilize the concept of Venn diagram when we will explain each and every set operation. So to understand the concept of set operation, it is very important to know the meaning and the implication of Venn diagram. So this is the Venn diagram. So we have the Venn diagram. Now let us move towards our important topic which is the operations of set or set operation. We know that sets are different from numbers because sets, the objects, the elements of the set can be even be different from numbers. It can be even alphabet or any other objects because from the last class we have understood that the set means a collection of definite and well distinguished objects. It can be different from numbers. It can be anything. The objects can be anything. But still, like numbers, there are certain mathematical operations that can be applied to set as well. And we in fact have five different types of set operation. Five different types of set operation. And which are they? One, the union of set. Two, the intersection of set. Three, the difference of set. Four, the complement of set. And finally, five, the partition of set. So, five different set operations are there. And which will be elaborated later. We have five different operations. The union of the sets, the intersection of the set, the difference of set, the complement of set and finally the partition of set. And today in our class, in this session, we will be looking at the first two operations which are more important than compared to the other three. So we will be focusing on the first two operations namely what is the meaning of the union of two sets. And second one, what, what is the meaning of the intersection of the two sets. So this concept that we are going to elaborate today. So let us start with the meaning of the union of the sets. Now let me, yeah, let us start with the concept of the union of set. So we have the first, the first type which is union of two sets or union of sets whatever be can be even more than two sets. So what is the meaning of the union of two sets? Let us say that we have two sets. Given the two sets say A and B. We have two sets. Let us assume that we have set A as well as set B. The union of the set which is usually represented as something like this. This read as A union B. 
consists of all those elements which belongs to set A, either set A or set B. Understood? A union B given the set of A and set B, A union B consists of all those elements that belongs to either set A or set B. In other words, it means that all the elements of set A will be there in the union set. All the elements of set B will be there in the union set. So all the elements of A along with the all the elements of will be there in the union. That means both sets are joining together to form an another union set. So A union B consists of all those elements that belongs to either set A or set B. So let me put in, the, in our uh, familiar form of description A union B means a union B is a set of all X such that X is an element of A or X is an element of B. In our description form, A union B means set of all X such that X is an element of A or X is an element of B. This is the A union B. And if we explain it in terms of our Venn diagram, which we have just now elaborated, when we draw the Venn diagram, let us say that we have a Venn diagram like this. This is the union set. And we have two sets A. This is set A. This is set A. And we have another set, say set B. A union B means all the elements of A will be there in the A union B. That means all the elements of set A will be there in the A union B as well as all the set of B will be there in the A union B. So that means when we draw the pictorial representation of A union B using our tool of Venn diagram, A union B basically means this is the concept of A union B. That means all the elements of A as well as all the elements of B will be there in the A union B. Okay, it's clear. So, A union B consists of all those elements that belongs to either set A or set B. Now, let us put this in terms of some kind of a numbers. Let us have a number. So, this is the Venn diagram. Let us let us explore the same case by using numbers. Let me put like this. Let us say we have a set called A, which consists of say 5, 8, say 10. Let's, let us call that we have another set, say set B, that includes say 8, 12, say 14. We have two sets. Set A consists of three elements, 5, 8 and 10, while set B consists of 8, 12 and 14. Now, how to calculate A union B? Let me put like this. A union B means, first we write set A, which is 5, 8, 10. Close the set. Union 8, 12, 14. Now, what will be the answer? All the elements of set A will be there in the A union B. So A union B will be equal to 5, 8, 10, 12, 14. See here, you should not repeat 8 here. That's the only caution that should be remembered when we calculate the A union B. The number should not be repeated because 8 belongs to both set A as well as set B. So we have A union B equals 5, 8, 10, 12, 14. So all the elements of set A is there in the union set. All the elements of set B is there in the union set. So A union B consists of all those elements that belongs to either set A or set B. So that's the union, that's the implication of union of the set. And it can even expand it to n number of sets. If let us throw that we have three sets. A, B, C. A union, B union, C means what? All the elements of set A along with the set B and along with the set C. So union means 
all the elements will be there in the union set. That means when we talk about two sets, we call that either A or B. That means all the elements of A along with the set, all the elements of set B will be there in the union set. Then this is the perhaps the first operation which is very popular in this set theory. We call it as the union of the two sets. Now, let us extend our analysis to look into our second important category that we are going to analyze today which is as we said it is the intersection set now let us say that we have the second type we have the second type today which is intersection intersection of sets or intersection of two sets now what is the meaning of intersection of two sets intersection of the two sets means given the set a and b a intersection B means, let us say that we have two sets A and B. A intersection is usually represented by this symbol. This means A intersection B. A intersection B consists of only those elements that belongs to the set A as well as set B. A intersection B consists of all those elements that belongs to set A as well as set B. That is all those elements that common to both these sets. That is set A and set B. All those elements that is common to both sets will be there in the intersection set. And in the form of description, we usually put like this. A intersection B consists of all those elements. Let us call it as X. It, it, those X which X is an element of A. And X is an element of B. It consists of all those x such that x is an element of A and this is, this is the important thing and in the case of union we call it as or because either set A or set B. Here it is and what is and means it should be there in the set A the element should be there in the set A as well as set B that means the elements which is common to both sets the elements that is common to set A and B will be there in the intersection set and if we draw the Venn diagram like here that we used to draw we have a Venn diagram and we have a universal set here we have say like earlier in we have a set A here we have a set set B here what will be the intersection point this is the intersection point right which is common, which is common between these two elements. This is the A intersection B. This is the A intersection B. This is the A intersection B. So, A intersection B consists of all those elements that belongs to both set A as well as set B. So, let us put, now explain the case of say, A intersection B by putting an example and uh, uh, numbers let us to elaborate this case and we have let us say a case where we have two sets say, like this A equals 2, 4, 6 B equals say 6, 8, 10. A intersection B means, let us calculate it, A intersection B means, first we write set A which is 2, 4, 6, intersection, intersection, the set B which is 6, 8, 10. Now, which element is common? See here, there is a 6 here and there is a 6 here. So, the common element that is common to both sets, that means, a intersection B equals what? It equals 6. Clear? That is A intersection B consists of all those elements that belongs to both sets. The elements that are common to both sets will be there in the intersection set. And it is quite possible that there will be a situation in which 
There will not be any element that is common to both sets. Like for example, say, let us say that a case like here. For example, let, let me just remove this. And we have a set B. We have a set B, something like this. We have a set B. Like say, 8, 10, 12. And if we calculate A intersection B in this, our new two sets, we have 2, 4, 6 in the first set, which is set A. B, we have 8, 10, 12. A intersection B consists of all those elements that belongs to both, that means set A as well as set B. So that is, the elements which are common will be there in the, in the intersection set. But see here, there is no element or there are no elements which is common to both these sets. That means there is no element. When we have no element, the set is known as what? The set is known as empty set. And we usually put like this. That means A intersection B E will be a null set. So when no elements are common between the two sets, that means if the intersection set is a null set or an empty set, that both sets are known as mutually exclusive set. Just remember this concept, it is known as mutually exclusive set. Means mutually exclusive set means there are no elements which is common to the set. It is known as mutually exclusive set. It is also known as disjoint set. It is also known as non-overlapping set. All these terms are there when we have a situation in which no elements are common. So when A intersection B is a null set and we have a particular situation like here, like here where we have a null set because no elements is common and these two sets are known as mutually exclusive set, non-overlapping set, disjoint set. And if we draw the Venn diagram of disjoint set, it will be like this. When we draw a Venn diagram of disjoint set, we will have set A here and we will have a set B here. There will not be any intersection part. This will not converge to each other. That's why we call it as a disjoint, non-overlapping because no element being or there is no convergence of the two Venn diagram, two circles which represent set A as well as set B. So that is with respect to the A intersection B. So we have seen two important types of set operations, elementary operation. And we have the first type which was the union of the two sets. The union of the two sets means a union B implies all those elements that belongs to both A as well as set B. That means all those elements that belongs to either of the two sets, either set A or set B will be there in the union set. And when we talk about the intersection, we are talking about a situation in which all those elements which is common to both the set, that means intersection set A and B, we call it as A intersection B defined as all those elements that belongs to both set A and set B. Here we use the term or, here we use the term and, because the element that is common to both sets will be there in the intersection set. And we also saw when the intersection set is an empty set, when there is no part which, which is intersection being intersected, and we have the, both sets are known as mutually exclusive set, non-overlapping uh, set or disjoint set. So this is or these are the first two operations of set theory. We will elaborate, hopefully in the next presentation, the other three operations, namely the difference of set, the complement of set, and finally the partition of set. So with that, our uh, basic set operations will be over. That, so that three terms or that three operations will be elaborated, hopefully in our next presentation. Hope that uh, the presentation is useful to you. So until we meet this time, stay safe, happy learning.